We have only an approximation of the total number of people who would have been on training courses at Fisville. We believe that it's certainly well over 50,000, but of course many of those people would have been attending non-practical firefighting courses. There are many courses run at Fisville. My estimate, and it's only an estimate, is probably 10 to 20,000, maybe as many as 30,000 people went through live fire training during that period, 1971, well in fact 1974 when the pad opened, through to when it was closed in 1998 or 96. So it's a very large number of people, but in terms of the risk categorization, we come back to what I was saying earlier. There are only a very small number of people over those years who were very actively involved and for prolonged periods involved in handling the chemicals, the pad operators. We're probably talking of a dozen to 20 people across that period, some of whom a small number served for very long periods. And with the full-time instructors, we're talking of a population of around about 70. We interviewed some 50 of those. On average, they were here for about 3.5 years, some of them for longer. So the populations which we have characterised as relatively high exposure number below 100 or maybe a little bit above 100. So it's a very tiny fraction of the total number of people who trained on life fibre exercises here. And I emphasise that for the average trainee who might have attended you know, half a dozen courses over their lifetime as a CFA volunteer or a CFA paid operator, then their exposure would have been relatively low and certainly not something which I think raises a very significant risk concern for them. The health study, which is now going to move on from where we have left off, I hope will concentrate very much its attention on the highest risk groups, but that's not to say that they won't also be talking with a number of people, many of whom genuinely feel that they have been affected by their exposures at Fistville.